This morning, we are continuing the conversation on the heat spells we've been experiencing over the past few months, particularly how extreme heat will affect the water supply and electricity bills. And this morning, I'm joined by Minister of Public Utilities Marvin Gonzalez as he provides us with some tips on how we can conserve electricity and more about our water. Minister, good morning. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning, Rokas, and good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Of course, good morning to Lupino Bona West. Of right course, of course, Lupino Bona West. You can say good morning to Parliament as well. Of I mean, course, of <laughs> good morning to Parliament. <laughs> Minister, but I know that we are here to have a conversation as it relates to well, water, electricity, and a few other things. But yes. let's go first to the capacity at the dams. Um, how are we looking as it relates to the capacity that's able to go through the, yes. the taps in people's homes? So, most of the dams in Trinidad and Tobago, we have the Hillsborough Dam in Tobago, that's the only dam in Tobago. Right. Um, we desilted that dam successfully last year, and as a result of that, it is showing the level of resilience to the current heat that we are going through. Right. So thankfully, the Hillsborough Dam is still at healthy levels. Then we have the Carney Arena Dam in, um, on the East West Corridor in East Trinidad. That dam is also showing um, it is healthy as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Navet Dam, which is also healthy. The only dam that is showing um, worrying signs of depletion is the um, the Hollis Dam, which is located in Valencia, Trinidad, because we have not had the level of rainfall mm. for the rainy season. And this extreme heat that we are going through um, over the last couple of weeks and perhaps over the next week or two, um, that is certainly not uh, contributing to the dam um, being restored to, to, its, to its healthy level and, and full capacity. So as a result of that, this morning, the dam is at its, it's not at its long-term average. It is below its long-term average. And we have already cut back production. Masa has already cut back production by 500,000 gallons of water per day. Mm -hmm. So the dam was producing 8.4 million gallons of water, or 8.5. It has now been reduced to, um, to, to 7.5. And um, the, the way things are looking, by the end of this week or early next week, it can go to 7 million gallons of water per day. Um, wh what we have done over the last year is to successfully drill about three wells in the Aripo area. And those three wells are producing 600,000 gallons of water per day. And that's the reason why we have not imposed, WASA has not imposed water restriction um, off the Hollis system. That's right. customers of the Hollis system. And those will be customers in parts of Valencia, parts of Arima, Malaba, La Florissant, uh, Lillian Heights, uh, and then you come all the way down to Gad Village on the Arima Old Road, Aruka, parts of Aruka, Ridgeview, and some of those places, Bonia West. No, most of those areas that I'm calling um, are significant parts of my constituency, so yeah. I can tell you that. So the reason why we, WASA has not imposed water restriction um, on customers of the Holly system, it is because of those three wells that we drilled last year, which is supplementing the shortfall of the um, the Hollis um, reservoir. Minister, so, how how can we conserve any um how can we conserve the, the, the water though? Because I understand that yes the, the production has been you know reduced at mm -hmm. the Hollis Dam. We do have something to pick up the slack, but we as average citizens, how can we all also conserve water? And that is very important because you you still see citizens utilizing their water hose to wash down their yards. Yeah. You're still seeing car wash places all over the place utilizing hoses to, to wash down vehicles. They're not utilizing practices to conserve on water. Um, people are still um, allowing their shower to run um, during their, you know, during their, their normal daily showers. They are allowing their taps to run when they're, you know, um, brushing their teeth in the morning and at night times. Um, even when you're washing their wares, um, people are allowing their taps to run just like that. All of those things, um, they contribute to water wastage and um, it, it, it reduces the capacity of the utility to be able to distribute that water, to, especially to communities that do not have water. Yeah. So the, the, the season that we are experiencing, um, it, it sends a very powerful message, not only to customers of the Holly system, which is facing this situation with a depleted dam, but for all reservoirs, um, customers who are served by reservoirs all over Trinidad and Tobago, they should heed the call, take note of what is taking place in East Trinidad mm -hmm. and do their level, do their level of conservation because it means that the dam in your area would be able to maintain healthy levels so that you can go through 
this very difficult period in the next yeah. um, two weeks or so. Minister, let's switch gears to electricity. Yeah. I understand that the Utilities Ministry would have issued a press release recently giving tips in terms of how we can conserve electricity because as we were talking off air, yeah. we need that AC of because course. it's so, it's <laughs> so very, hot very, these very days. Important. And so what tips can you provide with the public in terms of how we can also keep our electricity bills down? Well, just to um, put it in the context, uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, TNTEC um, reported that for the first time in the history of Toronto and Tobago, we utilize 1,400 mm -hmm. megawatts of electricity mm -hmm. per day, even though it is below the installed capacity of the utility company. Right. It is the first time 1,400 megawatts of electricity, and that is as a result of the high usage of air conditions that we are having all over Trinidad and Tobago in our offices, in our homes, and our schools, etc. And all of these things to keep ourselves um, as cool as possible. But of course, this will result in increased electricity consumption and electricity bills, yes. and your, the, the amount of money you pay to the utility company. Not only that, but it also results in the, the amount of natural gas that is now going to be consumed mm. to generate electricity, yes. which is costing the state hundreds of millions of dollars because our electricity is produced by um, natural gas. And with the high levels of consumption and utilization of electricity, we are using more in natural gas to generate that electricity. So all of that is happening in the background, which is costing the state hundreds of millions of dollars. But at the customer um, level, there are some basic things that we can do. Taking off the, the lights when we leave our homes, mm -hmm. not allowing lights to, to run. Um, a couple of years ago, we introduced an LED light bulb um, initiative by the government of Toronto Tobago. Which Are was, we still giving out those bulbs, Minister? Those bulbs have not been utilized by customers, okay. unfortunately. I think um, the last time I checked, it was just about 60 or 70 percent of customers that made use of those bulbs. Mm -hmm. There are domestic customers that blatantly refused to take the bulbs because they don't need it. That, that is what they claim. And that is as a result of the low rates we pay for electricity. Let us be honest and let us be frank. As a country, we pay among the lowest rates for electricity. And our domestic customers are not incentivized to engage in conservation practices, you understand, to conserve on their electricity. So even with this light bulb initiative, it was not as successful as we anticipated because it was to send a message years ago that we need to engage yeah. in conservation practice. And our customers and our do domestic customers did not make use of it. Had we have those bulbs, had those bulbs in all our homes, it means then that we would have been utilizing less gas to mm -hmm. generate electricity and you would have seen the positive impact yeah. on your electricity bills because you would not have been consuming that amount of electricity. But if you are listening to this show, the customers and citizens listening to this show right now, I want to, to implore customers and citizens of Trinidad and Tobago to revisit this initiative. Make use of the LED bulbs that are available to you at Tiantec. And if you don't want to go to TNTech, you can visit your nearby grocery store and start changing over those, um, those old bulbs in our homes and replacing it with the um, LED bulbs because that in itself will contribute to, um, to our conservation practice and reduce the amount of electricity that we are consuming. Running our ACs, we can adjust our ACs at certain levels where we can keep cool not freezing cold, <laughs> we can keep cool yes. and utilizing even fans to keep the atmosphere in our homes. All of these things we can do yes. to, um, to keep ourselves as cool as possible whilst um, not burning the yeah. amount of electricity which can result in increase. No, in Minister, I'm going to go. Bills. I'm going to go quickly here. So I'm going to do a quick fire round because I know there's never enough time with you. So yeah, allow me to digress a bit. In terms of the updated electricity rates, do we have an update from RIC on that? No, they have not reported Nothing to me. Nothing on that as yet. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm awaiting the outcome of their work, mm -hmm. and um, I, I guess I will be informed um, once they're they're finished doing their draft um, determination, completing it. Yeah. And um, I guess when they're finished with their work, they will inform TNTEC whether they are going to be allowed to collect increased rates or whether the rates should be reduced, not exactly what they applied for. Mm -hmm. So I am awaiting the outcome of the work of the RIC. Certainly the RIC does not meet with me on a regular basis to update me on what they are doing. They just inform me that they are about to conduct public consultation based on an application for revised rates by the electricity company. And they, all, they were allowed to do that, to engage in public consultation. And the last I heard from them is that they have been going through the volumes of presentations received by citizens and stakeholders in Trinidad and Tobago. Right. And they will not complete the process 
until they would have gone through all of the contributions by stakeholders. Let's go back to Wasa. There was a recent vandalism at the Golden Grove station. What I found interesting is that they didn't take anything, but there was some, I, I guess, tampering with it some was, electricity. It was, it was actually blatant van um, It was blatant vandalism. vandalism. Tell us about it and it's, tell us any increased measures to boost up security at those booster so stations. So we are increasing measures. Um, there are some measures I certainly cannot speak to right now. But we are engaged with our stakeholders at the Ministry of National Security and the Trent Tobago Police Service. Right. We are utilizing our intelligence um, resources that are available to us to monitor the operations of our booster stations. But I can tell you it is not the last um, act of vandalism that we experienced is at the Golden Grove booster station, which was just commissioned mm -hmm. two months ago, um, serving over 11 or 15,000 customers in Aruka. And guess what? Five Rivers, mm -hmm. almost the heart of my constituency, and this blatant act of vandalism, which put the booster station out of operation and left 15,000 customers without water for a couple of days. Did the vandals take anything? They did not take anything. Okay. So it was just blatant vandalism, mm -hmm. um, the destruction of the electricity yes. um, infrastructure. Yes. And um, I want to thank the, the workers of the Water and Sewage Authority who went out of their way, work overnight to ensure that that booster station was brought back into full operation within the shortest time possible. But we have been seeing this all over Trinidad and Tobago, especially on some of the new infrastructure mm -hmm. that we are putting down under the Community Water Improvement Program. As Minister of Public Utilities, it worries me. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know why um, people would engage in these types of activities, which would result in so many of our customers not getting that basic um, supply of water on a daily basis. So people just engage in disruptive behavior. I don't know be, because they believe that the minister, the government will look bad. I don't understand why people would do something like that to disrupt the water infrastructure so that we, our own citizens will not have a supply of water. But it is very unfortunate. We are taking it very seriously and we are putting measures in place, including the technology that is available to us to monitor all of WASA's installations. Updates on WASA's restructuring plan. It is going very good. Um, in the coming week or two, I intend to have a comprehensive report with recommendations to the cabinet. And um, so in the coming month, um, based on the rec these recommendations that will be going to cabinet on a critical part of the restructuring, which is at the executive leadership, um, the country will be told of um, the, the, the way in which things are going on the restructuring. Remember, this restructuring process was attacked on two occasions mm -hmm. by the unions representing WASA workers. A lot of people forgot about that. Um, so it was derailed. They, they served an injunction to stop the transformation. They lost on two occasions. So we have to be very careful in how we go about this transformation because if we, are not, if we don't exercise care and, di and due diligence in the way in which this transformation is being ruled out and executed, then we can find ourselves and the transformation plan being derailed by court action, and we certainly don't want that. Of course. And Minister Budget Day was announced on October 2nd. Um, yes. Tell us some of the things, I know you can't give all the details, but some of the items that you would have put forward for fiscal 2023-2024. So we are going to be seeing a very exciting program, development program in the Water and Sewage Authority as well as TNTEC. Swim call. Mm -hmm. We will be seeing the launch of our beverage container um, legislation and policy, our recycling policy. A lot of focus is going to be placed on that, as well as an integrated waste management policy and legislation for Trinidad and Tobago. So in the waste management sector, a lot is going to be told in the budget. Um, where we're going to be ruling out our initiatives and policies with respect to the management of our waste. With respect to WASA, um, we got access to the IDB loan. We met conditions precedent. We are receiving the first tranche in the coming weeks, and the country is going to be told um, the, the number of projects that we are going to undertake to improve the supply of water, drilling of wells, mm -hmm. replacing of aging pipeline, refurbishment of our water treatment plants, four or five water treatment plants, major water treatment plants around Trinidad and Tobago are going to be refurbished to increase the capacity. We are going to be constructing two new water treatment plants in Santa Cruz, an additional three million gallons of water there. And in Goolsboro, Tobago, we are going to be constructing a new water treatment plant under that IDB program um, that will give that part of Tobago two million, two to three million gallons of water. And under the development program, so what I've just told you is under the IDB program, right. but under the development program, we will be ramping up activities under the community water improvement program, doing pipeline installations, booster stations all over, and refurbishment of some of our aging infrastructure. But because, because of this 
impact of climate change, the infrastructure for utility companies, Boudwasa and Tiantec is on the stream, and a lot of resources will be pumped into ensuring that all of the infrastructure, water and electricity, are resilient to the degrees of climate change. Yeah. Always a pleasure, Minister, Always to have pleasure. you thank in you this very morning. Much. Uh, thank you so much for sharing the tips with us. And I hope that the public, even me as well, I will be, you know, using those tips in my everyday life. So thank you so much. Please do. <laughs> I, I'm doing it myself. <laughs> and that, of course, was the Minister of Public Utilities, Minister Marvin Gonzalez, just telling us how we can conserve electricity and even our water consumption during this sweltering heat. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us. Water, water.